you're not tuned in to something super tight. Puffin' something sticky, nigga, I roll through the light Need to hear something real just to get me through the night I'm looking for them jackets cause I know they looking shy Know I'ma get some game tuned in with super tight Yeah, I get the low love from Big Bobo From the front seat, not no photos Already, baby, what it do is super tight TV You got your big dog Bobo Luciano in the house I got my sexy ass, gorgeous, beautiful wife Hey, it's your girl, Jazzy K. We in this building, man. We got a real super tight. I was going to say super tight guest. You can. No, 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 no. Super tight family member. There we go. That's, That's super tight part of the show. That sounds We're going to do it like that? Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. so we're going to do it like this. We're going to switch things up. We're not going to interview nobody. We're just really going to have a, you know how we do. We, we have regular conversations with our family members. We don't want y'all to get lost in the sauce, but we want y'all to just kind of follow along with us. But we got, we don't want to only be about the music industry. We don't only want to be about the entertainment industry and, and sports and things like that. We want to really attack the black community and, and the uh, minority community, you know, see what we can do to move the needle a little bit. And so I'm just going to you know, shut it down for myself and kick it to my beautiful wife and let her get this thing started. You ready, baby? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right, y'all. So this show, um, we're going to be dedicating to mental health awareness. So we're going to be doing a lot of talking um, about mental health today. And uh, we have a special guest. We have Miss Fantasia here. She is an advanced uh, practice registered nurse who is board certified in psychiatric mental health nursing as well as family nurse practitioner, okay? After earning her bachelor's degree, she's worked as a nurse for 10 years in the operating room and went on to pursue her master's degree. Um, she spent several years working as a nurse practitioner with diverse patient populations in both the public and private sectors. So welcome, Fantasia. Hey, hey. Welcome, welcome to the family. Thank you. Thank you for having me. How Hi. you doing? I'm doing all right. Already. You, you're looking good. Nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. <laughs> Already. <laughs> so um, today on the show, we just really wanted to, um, because we both have a passion about uh, mental health, depression, you know, and, and just spreading education and awareness about that in the black community. So we thought, you know what I mean? We have, have my girl on here. This, this, this lady is a wealth of knowledge, okay? So uh, we're going to pick her brain today. And we're going to talk about, uh, well, first, before we get started, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, like, where are you from? Well, I'm from Dallas. Hey. Born and raised in Dallas. Oh, really? Uh, well, boy, you can't just say Dallas now. It's really Dallas proper. Yeah, Honestly, it's Dallas oh. proper. What uh, that mean? I mean, you know, like, you act like we from the Eagleville, Air, uh, Balk Springs area. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. No, we from the hood. I, you know, some people might not know what that well, is. Well, listen, I'm just telling you, I spent a lot of my weekends right up off uh, in Highland Hills, right off of okay. Bonnie View. That's okay, yeah, okay. So there we go. So, what made you want to go into mental health nursing? Uh, so, I, I was a family nurse practitioner for several years, and I was working in homeless outreach. And so, as you can imagine, there's lots of um, mental health issues um, in the homeless uh, population. So, I saw a need and wanted to be able to take care of my patients. Um, and so, I went into mental health and I, you know, I, I like mental health, honestly. Yeah. I, I've always loved mental health, um, but I just wanted to make sure I expanded my knowledge and was, you know, equipped to take care of my patients. Awesome. So, from your experience, let's talk about misconceptions okay let's talk about um, a lot of common misconceptions uh, where I guess we'll focus in on depression mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. depression yes um, what are a lot of misconceptions that you hear in particular for the black community um, mm -hmm. I'll be honest I struggle with this a little bit professionally and personally, because um, I have to start out by saying I know that we, as black people, we we always say we're strong, we're yes. resilient, and we're all those things. So mm -hmm. personally, I know this to be true. How can we not mm -hmm. be all those things, um, given our history? Absolutely. But professionally, 
we are not invincible. We're not um, where we are padded away from uh, being uh, depressed or, you know, insulated away, away from being depressed or having any mental health disorder for that matter. Yes. Um, I think the misconception is, is that you're not depressed, you know, you'll, you'll get over it or you can do it or you don't need, mm-hmm. you know, you don't need mental health services, those mm-hmm. types of things. There's lots of um, misconceptions about. And yeah, and you do hear that a lot in uh, black families, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. y'all need that medicine. Mm-hmm. They just want to put you on exactly. medicine. Mm-hmm. They just want to. Can you, can you kind of explain mm-hmm. what depression is to people? Mm-hmm. So they. So anytime I talk about depression, I'm going to go from di- literally diagnostic to, you know, mm-hmm. criteria. Okay. So we have our diagnostic criteria for people, and it's, it's several things, but feeling down, depressed, hopeless, helpless, yes. um, having crying spells. Uh, um, sometimes people have appetite disturbances, eating too much. You know, some people say, I'm a, I'm a stress eater. When mm-hmm. they, sometimes they mean when they feel depressed, they eat too much. Mm-hmm. Some people don't eat at all. Yes. Um, irritability. Um, mm-hmm kind of being easily annoyed, uh, poor focus, concentration, sleep disturbances. Um, There's several uh, Mm -hmm. boxes that you can check, but everybody may not experience depression the exact same way. So that's why it's kind of like you have to meet criteria based upon Mm -hmm. uh, if you meet enough of these symptoms. Are those those traits? Uh, More like symptoms. Symptoms, okay. Mm -hmm. And and, and depression, is that kind of more like a, a... a chemical imbalance or anything like that? So it's interesting you ask that question because we used to say this is a chemical imbalance. And so without getting too deep in the weeds, more studies are starting to kind of surface that it's not necessarily a chemical imbalance. But we used to think that it was a chemical imbalance. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest with you. I think right now the studies suggest we really don't know. Wow. We really don't know. Um if there's some type of chemistry in the brain that causes depression, mm-hmm. we really don't know. But historically, yes, we said it was an imbalance of, you know, neurotransmitters, you know, serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, all these different neurotransmitters that we thought caused uh, depression. But is that a part of it? Because I know a lot of the medications mm-hmm. have to do with those neurotransmitters. Mm-hmm. So here's the tough part about medications and for mental health in general. And this is probably not very reassuring, but sometimes we don't even know how or why the medications work. We just know they work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's 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 the tough part about it. Um, but yes, that they work on those chemicals and in in the brain and and um and really that that's probably the best we have between that and therapy gotcha. um, to treat depression. Wow, and so. As far as depression, so in your um, practice, are you seeing more people uh, come forward with symptoms of depression? Do you think do you think depression is more prevalent now, or that there's just more education out about it now? This is a tough one because I think it's a little bit of both. Mm-hmm. To be honest, I think without getting too far in, I think just the way things are now in society, I do think that people are more depressed. And then you look at certain things, inflation, or if you have a uh, high unemployment, you know, rates, uh, those types of things. I think all of that can, you know, COVID, I saw a lot of people come, uh, you know, through, through the clinic, you know, during COVID because you're mm-hmm. isolated, you lost your job, you know, mm-hmm. these types of things. You're at home, you're trying to homeschool and work which is almost impossible for yeah. some people. Like, I, you know, how are you going to homeschool your child and you're trying to work, yeah. even yeah. if it's remotely? You yes. saw a lot of people um, lose uh, child care, access to child care, daycare, those types of things. So I saw a lot of depression um, come through um, COVID and we're still in that, mm-hmm. actually. But I saw a lot of that. Oh, wow. Okay, now one thing I do want to touch on too, because you hear a lot in the news, there have been several um, celebrities that come forth and are open about their struggles with bipolar depression. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've had um, Jennifer Lewis, she wrote her book, she was very open about it. Everyone's heard about Kanye West and his struggles with bipolar, but I think because of that, that is kind of this sensational, you know, and I think people use the word bipolar. uh, Loosely. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. like, oh, you're upset. 
a lot. Mm. You're bipolar. Mm. Like, let's kind of touch on that and educate people on what bipolar is and isn't. So bipolar is just like, you know, the standard major depression disorder. So it has its own set of diagnostic criteria. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what I'll say um, about this is without knowing them personally in their own situation personally, Mm -hmm. it's difficult to say, do you really have bipolar disorder or not? Mm -hmm. The reason why I say that is because sometimes you can, um, you can expose yourself to certain things, certain substances, and it'll look like bipolar disorder, but it's not bipolar disorder. Mm. And so we have folks who self-medicate. We have lots of, you know, um, stuff on the streets mm-hmm. and that it'll look like schizophrenia, look like bipolar disorder, but it's not. Bi- it's not. It's mm-hmm. substance induced. Yeah. And if you stop the stu- substance, sometimes the symptoms resolve. But what we are finding is, is that even after you stop that substance, you can still have those symptoms. And so mm-hmm. you permanently have those symptoms. Um, even though that's not, it wasn't bipolar disorder beginning, you kind of broke your brain. Yeah. Well, if that makes any sense. Yeah. By the drug use? Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. What, what drugs, you say self-medicating, now I go straight to drugs, it could be alcohol. Mm-hmm. Um, what drugs do you see prevalent in people <sighs> that, 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 they run, that they run to? Well, I know it could be several, but well, from your experience. When she asked particularly about bipolar disorder, you know, bipolar disorder, you know, you can have depressive episodes and you can have what we call manic episodes. Okay. So manic mania, basically, uh, you don't sleep, you're impulsive, okay. those types of things. Racing thoughts, you're not, you know, those types of things. Um, euphoria, almost inflated self-esteem. I mean, those people are really high, right? Okay. They're up here, yeah. man- mania. And then the depressive state, you're all the way down, right? Now yeah. I'm depressed. Now I'm, you know, the, all those de- depression criteria we talked about earlier, that's your depressive state. It depends on the drug. Got you. If you usually are, uh, if you're abusing something like a, um, an upper, yeah. you know, cocaine, cocaine, cocaine crack mm-hmm. cocaine, those types of things. You can see manic. It looks like mania. Got you. You make it, okay. it can look like mania. You don't sleep, right? Mm-hmm. You know. Um, and then you have, like you said, alcohol. Alcohol is depressant. You yeah. can have people literally drink themselves into depression. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, yeah. And K two when K two came out, I'm gonna tell you, Ooh. people was tripping Ooh, off that K two. Hit the streets, and I remember it was at first it was sold in like cig- like cigar shops, like mm-hmm. smoke shops and yeah. stuff. And I would see kids, you know, kids would come in, and these kids were perfectly okay kids. I know these kids were okay, right? And then uh, they started kind of picking up this K two, had access to the K two, and then they, all of a sudden they're depressed, they're in you know class zoning out, not paying attention, sleeping, mm-hmm. you know, all kinds of stuff, moody, irritable, um, had behavior problems that they never had before. Wow. So, all from smoking potpourri. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. really, that's what it looked like. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. And so, uh, focusing again back back to bipolar, mm-hmm. um, what are some of the symptoms that, okay, if someone's sitting at home wondering, uh, am I bipolar or mm-hmm. am I, what are some of the things they should be looking for? I know you don't know them personally, but taking out substance abuse mm-hmm. and taking out what are some things um, that are red flags that may tell them you need to go seek Or their family further. members need to look yeah. be looking for. Yeah, you need to seek further treatment. So first and foremost, one big thing is if you don't sleep and you have lots of energy, like you just don't need to sleep. Wow. You just have lots of energy. You can go on and on like the Energizer, mm-hmm. energizer Buddy. Yes. You say. That's probably one of the first things we go, okay, why are you not sleeping, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, or if you sleep for... An hour, 30 minutes, something like that. You're like, well, I slept and I feel great the next day. If you're refreshed off of 30 minutes, an hour, yeah. that kind of makes us think, huh? You know, impulsivity. Um, I usually ask my patients, do you go and shop excessively? Mm-hmm. And most women, there's such thing as retail therapy. But right. we'll say, oh, I love to go. And we, I like mm-hmm. to shop, too. It makes you feel a little bit better. Yeah. But if you yeah. shop till you drop, literally, like you have, you can't pay your bills. You have credit card debt from just going out shopping or gambling, mm-hmm. high risk um, behavior, like 
a promiscuity. This is a person you went and had sex with, and you never like if you were not yeah. bipolar, you'd be like, I would never be with that person. Why mm-hmm. did I do that? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, inflated self esteem. Uh, people thinking they have like special gifts or power. This is the people um, who, you know, they say I'm an artist, mm-hmm. and I was up painting uh, this mural for four days. And I wasn't tired. I just wanted to paint this mural for four days. Wow. Um, so increase what we call goal-directed behaviors. You're up cleaning. You're, you're not sleeping, but you're up cleaning mm-hmm. for four days. Mm. Those types of things. So it's almost everything in excess. It's almost, mm-hmm. it's just too much. Too much. Excessive talking, those types of things. Really, um, uh, really bad mood swings. One, one moment to the next okay. uh, mm-hmm. mood swings. Um, and I think that's what a lot of people associate with bipolar, mm-hmm. just mood swing. They're like, oh, they're bipolar. It's yeah. their personality, it's, all that old stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's more yeah. to it. Okay. Well, going to the hood, you know, let's let's, let's bring it home. Mm-hmm. Um, earlier, you mentioned that you know sometimes you 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 may see instances where you can say the medication might might not you know you don't know mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So, I I did a, a interview. And being in a black community, you know, I always like to hit on the fact that I suffer from depression, you know, you know, my testimonial. And then, you know, I always, you know, sometimes I say always, sometimes I'll check the comments. Mm -hmm. Then you see some of the people in the comments, you know, oh, don't take the medication. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, from your experience, I don't I don't want you to feel like you swaying somebody from one way or the other. Do you? encourage medication or do you encourage more of a therapy uh it's a good question so for bipolar disorder 100 percent of the time not 99 not 98 not 95 percent the mainstay of treatment is medication gotta have it gotta have it period yes. we're gonna put you on medication because the risk if we don't um like i said i've seen it destroy lives marriages yes. financially just destroy you um yes. with a manic episode or even a depressive episode so 100% of the time for bipolar disorder, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, medication. Mm-hmm. For um, what we call MDD, major depression, um, it depends on the patient. It depends on their their circumstances. And I think a little bit of this is nuanced because if you ask any clinician, uh, we kind of all have our way of practicing. For me, mm-hmm. I try not to recommend things that I know that my patient is not going to do or don't they don't want to do. I yeah. give them my mm-hmm. my best advice and then I say, you know, but the decision is yours. Mm-hmm. Mainstay for me for me, any anytime I see a patient, I'm almost always going to recommend psychotherapy. Okay. okay? Almost okay. always. But the best evidence usually says that medication with therapy okay. is giving you your best opportunity, your best chance okay. of what we call remission, basically depression free. Right. Yeah. Some patients um, say, no, I don't want to take the medication. I don't want to get I don't want to rely or get addicted to a medication. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But 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 antidepressants are not addictive so to speak mm-hmm. it's not yeah. an addiction issue right that's that's y'all heard that yeah I mean, it's that, not that's an addiction important. issue that's important to hear yeah it doesn't it's not a dependence issue it's not a, a, a anything like that mm-hmm. um in fact some patients depend on the patient if they go into remission for after a year we say okay you want to try it off try off the medication that's fine we can try it okay um but if you know you need to get better and you want to get better fast, lots of patients will say, I'll do whatever it takes to get better because yeah. I'm this is causing problems. so much yeah. problems, right? In my mm-hmm. marriage, in mm-hmm. my in my professional life, right? Yes. Because we know depression doesn't just stay isolated to at home or even at work. It yeah. usually carries over in all these different aspects of your life. And so for me, I always say, if you want to get better faster, sooner, quicker, because therapies work. Yes. You're mm-hmm. going to have to show up. You got homework. You yeah. got to go. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but medication usually paired with it. Sometimes it's going to yeah, mm-hmm. help help you get better quicker and faster. And explain to um, everyone what psychotherapy is. Because people hear the word psycho, you know, and they're oh. Oh, I ain't crazy. You so know, that's so. a thing. Yeah, I'll use somebody. Yeah. So it's just a fancy way to say counseling. Yeah. It's just counseling, therapy counselors. Go talk to somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, being in the black community, you know, you 
<clears throat> we have all these conspiracy theories, mm -hmm. you know, and they think, oh, the medication is, you know, the government, they, they want to keep you medicated, mm -hmm. you know, I just, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm an advocate for it, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because I haven't tried any psychotherapy or mm -hmm. anything like that, but mm -hmm. I feel wonderful, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. with, the, with the medication and still on it to this day, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I feel, you know, I try to kick it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I said, it's not it's not addictive, but when you when you're not on it, I feel I feel a little bit different. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I feel great on it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. It makes me get out, go throughout my day. So and um, I heard you mention stress uh, was was one of the traits, but it seemed like and then later on you you kept mentioning stress. It seemed like that might be the is that one of the number one. Causes of yes. uh, depression. Well, yeah, I mean, all of us, you know, all of us have a breaking point. Mm -hmm. Nobody is built to never break. Yes. That's just, I mean, if you don't hear anything else I say, hear that, is that nobody is built mm -hmm. to never break. Nobody's we come invincible. in this world, we're going to go out of this world. You're not yes. going to stay here forever. Okay. My preference is that you don't go out behind depression mm -hmm. when there's resources and there's um, assistance and help. They think the resource is God sometimes, even though. He, listen, I'm a strong proponent of of your faith and yes. whatever keeps you grounded, your family. Mm -hmm. um, but to go back to what you said is go talk to somebody. Let me put something on the end that go talk to somebody that's qualified. Yes. 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 Because you have lots of people will will try to give you advice, try to call themselves counselors and therapists, and they're not qualified. Oh, they're see giving that. you an opinion. Already. And, you know, that's fine if you want to pay for their opinion, but uh, I'm paying for therapy, not your opinion. Yes. You know, I'm trying to get um, better. right, mm -hmm. right. And if your opinion is not rooted and you're grounded in facts or evidence, then that, for me, I care even less what you say. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. Do you think that um, because look at our uh, grandparents and and I do believe uh, depression was prevalent, you know, years mm -hmm. and years ago. I just think we have more knowledge and information about it now do you think that um some of the foods and stuff that we eat now mm -hmm. can be triggering some of these um because it's a lot of stuff in the food you mm -hmm. know what i mean unlike years ago when people grew their own food and mm -hmm. and things were more natural mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's a great question okay mm -hmm. so i a hundred percent believe that um depression can be associated with poor diet, mm -hmm. lack of exercise. We matter of fact, right now in 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 my professional setting, we've you know as professionals started saying, look, we need to start writing more prescriptions for exercise, write mm -hmm. more prescriptions for you know a, a, a better diet, those types of things. Get outside so outside in the sun, yeah, get outside in the sun, the yes, those types of things. Mm -hmm. So a hundred percent. We know that diet can influence, um, you know, mood. Mm -hmm. It really can. Wow. Um, nutritional deficits, those types of things can definitely influence. Mm -hmm. You know, we recommend like a Mediterranean diet is what we call it first, you know, more leafy greens, those types of things. We 100% mm -hmm. recommend if you have depression, try Mediterranean diet. See if that, that uh, helps. So, yeah, to answer your question, I think a lot of the stuff that we eat uh is not assisting us when it comes to depression. Mm -hmm. Not only that, when you talk about our, you know, in our community, we're talking about blood pressure issues mm -hmm. and diabetes and all these types of things as well. And your risk, your your lifetime risk goes up for depression mm -hmm. yeah. and anxiety whenever we have, you know, these types of uh, medical conditions yeah. as well. It's interesting. Uh, chronic pain and those types of things, you know, can pre you know, predispose oh, yes. you for, for depression. But... You know, a lot of that stuff comes from inflammation. If we eat in, an inflammatory diet, well, you know, yeah. that's true. Um, now, back, I do want to go back to uh, bipolar just for a second, mm -hmm. because we're going to um, do more of these segments where we just kind of um, highlight a certain uh, mental health condition. Um I know there is a difference between there's two different types of bipolar. There, right? It's like bipolar one, one and two. And two. Can mm -hmm. we kind of brush over uh, the differences in those? Mm -hmm. So, one and two. The probably the most simplest way I can put this is one. 
um, is full blown mania. So those symptoms that I told you about, where you're, you know, es- you're elevated, yeah. you know, yeah. 10, it's 20 feet yeah, down. and so that you're not sleeping, right? You're not sleeping. Um, you have lots of in your impulse, all those types of things. Basically, um, the severity and how long that occurs. So usually four days and less is what we call hypomanic. Yeah. Okay. Anything above four days is mania. Okay, so that's how we know you're either bipolar one or you're bipolar two. Mm-hmm. Symptoms are pretty much the same, but the 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 extent to which you're up and you okay. you're not sleeping and things gotcha. like that. Okay, gotcha. That makes sense. And then, um, so a lot of people are afraid of, um, to seek treatment. Mm-hmm. A lot of people um, are afraid because of misconceptions with side effects from medications mm-hmm. and blah, 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 blah. Um, what can you tell us about some of the side effects from, mm-hmm. you know, I know, and I know it's, it's an array of medications mm-hmm. out mm-hmm. there. So, mm-hmm. but just, let's just say someone struggling with depression. Okay. Mm-hmm. And they say, you know, I'm, I'm going to seek treatment and they get put on medication. Mm-hmm. What are some of the side effects? Um, that are you know that that may say mm, maybe this medicine isn't for you and you need to seek another one mm-hmm. or are there a lot of side effects or is that just a myth? So it's tough because let me just say this: you can go to Walgreens, CVS, Walmart, any drugstore, and you can pick something off the counter mm-hmm. that's just sitting right there on the counter, cough syrup. Yep. And if you turn it over, it's got side effects to it. Whether right. we and, and I don't know why we do this thing like, oh, well, I'll just go take something over the counter. Right. Even if you go get an herb, an herbal supplement, there's not where there's no side effects. Mm-hmm. You can still have side effects. So let me just say that. Mm-hmm. So same, you know, same difference. When you go pick something off the counter, equal, you can still have side effects. Now, mm-hmm. for depression, so MDD, major depression disorder, usually we're going to recommend what we call an SSRI or SNRI. Okay, mm-hmm. they use the mainstay, first line those? treatment. What's selective serotonin re- reuptake inhibitors mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. selective norepinephrine re- re- reuptake inhibitors. It's a long mm-hmm. name. And basically, um, they they work very similar, just work a little bit different um, uh, on different chemicals. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but both of them equally good, first, first mm-hmm. line treatment. Those medications... Um, you know, everybody's different. Some people get tired off the medications mm-hmm. and some people don't get tired. Some mm-hmm. people, um, it can make them sleepy. Sometimes it can make them uh, um, have an increased appetite. Sometimes it doesn't increase your appetite. Mm-hmm. Everybody's different because everybody's very different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think the biggest thing that people really worry about, and I'm just going to go straight there, especially for men. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, women too, but men is the biggest thing is sexual side effects people worry about. Oh, libido. A lot of men, yeah, a lot of men, when I get to yeah. prescribing and I start saying, okay, and there's a potential sexual side effects. You can have I'm erectile out. dysfunction, a low sex drive or low interest or whatever. I'm out. Men, yeah, that's what they do. <laughs> they out. ready, they pack up. Okay, I'm done. Nope, I don't want that. What? Yeah. You know, they ready to bounce on that. But what I say <laughs> is this, is that every, well, I mean, <laughs> Here's the thing. But you know, people think with the little head instead of the big head. Oh, Lord. They do. That's what I'm saying. It's like every time, it's like when I prescribe a medication, I don't do that. And I do the same thing with every patient. I don't do that just like light. Like here's some medication. Bye. I I think about every single patient. Risk versus benefit. If I don't do something. And by the time you come see me, it's usually for a reason. If you don't do something. What are the chances you're going to get better? Right. And how is this going to affect you if you don't get better? That's what they need to hear. That's the part. Oh, yeah. You talking about sexual side may not be no sex. That because mm. you got such you a terrible. Yeah, you, you, yes. you got such a terrible temperament. Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> That's what happened to me. That, I mean, don't let's keep, it, let's keep yeah. it up. Right. Say, hey. You're going to get it right. Yeah, you can't lay up next to me with this old terrible attitude. You know, that type of stuff. Yep, yep, I feel you on that. So, you know, we have that conversation. We do, we do. Right. So, uh, have you noticed, it's probably a hard question to to gauge, from your patients and from your experience, which race do you see the most depressed? Uh, That's a tough one, because a lot of that will depend on where you work and who's yes. and who's yeah. and, and that's why I'm asking right there for what you said. Mm-hmm. Um, I would think black people would be low. 
They are less. They they're a lot less likely because of what she just mentioned, not seeking treatment. That and here's the thing. Let me say this uh, much about because me and me and me and Jazzy have these conversations all the time. Yes, we do. Um, I get it, right? I I understand why black folks traditionally are very skeptical mm -hmm. of seeking medical and psychiatric treatment, yes. right? Historically, it has not been that kind to us, yes. right? Mm -hmm. We know in civil rights, people diagnosed with schizophrenia for thinking yes. you need, to, yeah, people yeah. literally diagnosed with mental illness because you thought you should be equal to that of, you right. know, a, you know a counterpart. Mm -hmm. um, or you shouldn't be a slave, you know, thinking you weren't, you shouldn't oh, be a slave. Oh, you crazy. Yeah, you, you out <laughs> your mind. Yeah. If you think you shouldn't be a slave, those types of things. <laughs> uh, all and so forth and so on. So I get it. Um, there is a such thing of being having a healthy, uh, um, healthy fear, healthy mm -hmm. uh, being skeptical mm -hmm. of things, and you should. Yes. However, at some point, uh, you're not doing yourself any good by not seeking care. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're not getting any better. The best thing you can do, and I encourage everybody, is to become informed that's the get thing. as much information as you can and when you come to see your provider you come with that information yeah mm -hmm. come with questions come with information and that way you don't feel like it's just a one-sided decision you have yeah. some information you can bring to the table Already. and come with some real information not just a bunch of stuff you done googled okay and yes. tell you uh, and don't come with a diagnosis <laughs> don't yes. come in don't come in there telling me I got bipolar disorder. Ah. I, you know, you'll see I have such and such. Um, you, yeah, you paid your copay or you paid your cash visits to come in and, and, and get an assessment. Let them tell them what your symptoms are and how it's affecting you. Yeah. Right. If you just come in with that. Right. That helps a lot. That helps a lot. Yeah. Right. I'll share a, a bit of my story. I have struggled, have my struggles in the past with depression as well. I currently take medication. Uh, that, that's my happy pill. I'm going to take it because, um, and I want to share because I think a lot of times um, wives and mothers and we, you know, we're, we play such a integral part mm -hmm. in the family. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times if you're not right, um, mm -hmm. it affects the family. Mm -hmm. And so for my, my personal, st I mean, I realized I was, um, irritable, you know, didn't have the interest in doing things that I normally like to do, like, you know, cooking and getting out doing stuff mm -hmm. with my kids. Um, even, you know, when you come home from work and the kids are like, oh, mommy, and you're like, hey, babe. I mean, I was like, uh, straight mm -hmm. to the room. Like, mm -hmm. I, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, crying spells where it's time, like things that normally wouldn't make you cry, you're crying and you're like, what am I crying about, about this, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and luckily I had people like Fantasia that I could say, Hey, you know, I'm experiencing this, I'm experiencing that. What do you think? You know what I mean? And was able to, um, um, seek treatment, get medication mm -hmm. and it helped. Um, but I think a lot of women, like we go, 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 go. And you don't take that time to assess your own. And I feel like depression can creep up on you, mm -hmm. you know, before you know it. You you in this funk all the time and you don't even, mm -hmm. yeah you don't even realize when it started. Mm -hmm. So um, I kind of just want to uh, encourage and like let people know some of the resources or some of the things they can because not everybody has health insurance. Mm -hmm. Not everybody what some of the things they can do to seek that um, treatment or uh, just resources if you don't have mm -hmm. anybody that you can you know reach out to. Well, certainly in the, the Dallas area. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I can't speak for anything above, you know, outside of Dallas. Mm -hmm. But in the Dallas area, you do have, you know, things like Metro Care, Dallas Metro Care, okay. um, Dallas MHMR, um, Parkland, um, you know, that, that if you don't have the money to, to pay for uh, services, because they are expensive. Mm -hmm. A lot of psych psychiatrists are cash pay. Yeah. Lots of therapists, cash pay. Yeah. Um, a lot of... Um, a lot of uh, organizations now kind of have outreach where you can see a therapist and they'll do a sliding scale, those types of things. And it'll vary 
based upon where you're located. Um, you mentioned God, right? So if you belong to a church, sometimes the church is now realizing that depression is real. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anxiety is real. And these are not made away. up. Yeah, these are not. You can pray for me. That's great. Yeah. I appreciate it. But now I need you to help me. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, so um, I think you're seeing a lot more of, of, of churches kind of come to that realization that we need to kind of give more support. So you've seen mm-hmm. counseling centers open with people who are licensed professional counselors and yeah. those types of things. So those are resources as well. That's awesome. Because um, that is a big people pray about it. You know what I mean? And I always tell people, God made medicine too. 100%. Yeah, made did. the doctors. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, we do... Does it even sound right to say, well, just pray about that breast cancer. Just pray. Don't worry about this chemo. Don't worry about this, this you know, mass well, you know, you got some people that don't, radiation. You, know, you got some people like that that won't go to the doctor, mm-hmm. don't believe in medicine. Mm-hmm. And and that's why I'm, I'm adamant about doing this segment because mm-hmm. if I know I can't help everybody. I know we can't help everybody, but if we can affect just one person and, and, and and help that person and get them turned around. If y'all want to, you know, hit our comment section and, and, you know, it's anonymous, you know what I'm saying? Hit the comment section with questions and things like that. We will get back to you. Mm -hmm. Um, We just want to help the community. That's basically it. We're not pushy. We're not preachy. We just want to do our part. You know what I mean? And I appreciate you. Well, I have one more question. Oh, hit them. What are, uh, what do you think are, are there any, um, supplements or vitamin supplements that people can take that do kind of help uh, increase those feel good mm-hmm. neurotransmitters. Marijuana. Uh, oh, not that one. Just, I, I, I know, that well, could that's be a whole other show. Yeah, we can do a whole show. We can do a whole other show. Um, <laughs> I just asked him because <laughs> you, you know people do think that. Mm-hmm. I can I, I can smoke a little bit for my depression. Listen, I'm gonna tell y'all something, if y'all. It, I'm one of those people. I'm not one of those people that just say this is a hundred percent wrong. We shouldn't do the whatever. Like we know, like if you have a seizure disorder, we know certain strains of marijuana help people who have seizures and right. things like mm-hmm. that. Glaucoma, you know, these mm-hmm. types of things. What I will say is I have seen a lot. And when I say a lot of folks now coming through, um, who are depressed and anxious. And I've even pe- seen people psychotic Mm-hmm. literally have a psychotic break wow. on uh, marijuana they got from somewhere. The marijuana that we're using today ain't the marijuana we use. This ain't your granny. I didn't know you was going there. there. I was about to go there. Yeah. This is so several times stronger. <laughs> yes. People are lacing stuff with um mm-hmm. with the marijuana. You don't know what you, I mean I literally saw um every week I see every day I'm like, well is another you know, people too high. That I mean literally I was like what else could have happened? You know, this surely marijuana is not doing all of this. And do you think I, on that note, because a lot of people say, oh, there's nothing wrong with marijuana. It's natural. It's not. It uh, was. But the younger, I mean, the younger, I feel like, you know, when you're young and then you, you're taking on a substance that's affecting your developing brain, have you seen... um you know, increase. children, an increase in mental health episodes, whether it's depression or otherwise, from from sub- marijuana. A hundred percent. Wow. A hundred percent. Ooh, that's interesting. A hundred percent. That's very interesting. And as you alluded to, when you're talking about a brain that's not even fully formed, that's still developing, that's probably one of the most dangerous times mm-hmm. that you could be using marijuana, you know, because you literally... Um, that developing brain is so sensitive. Mm-hmm. Um, lowering, lowering IQ level. I'm talking about <laughs> there's so much that's happening in that developing brain. Um, and then when you're talking about depression, I've seen lots of kids that come in, adolescents, they come in, um, they started smoking weed or whatever, and they're now literally clinically depressed. Wow. They're clinically depressed behind it. Um, They're starting to way too young. Starting way too young. Um, and some things that kids don't understand is moderation either, mm-hmm. right? Oh, yeah. You know, when they go in, they're going in 100%. They're going in, right? right? Especially these youngsters yeah. nowadays. <laughs> you I'm know. talking to they, I'm, Yeah, I mean, they like just stogies. going in. Yeah, 
just going in and having a good every day, all day long. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. You know. I'm not high enough. <sighs> Wow. I'm telling you, I've seen a lot. So I say with parents in particular, your child, that's one thing about it, because depression looks different sometimes for adolescents. Mm-hmm. Sometimes um, their symptoms are just irritable. They just got a bad attitude. Now, you know, adolescents can have that anyway. Come on now. Mm-hmm. But if your kid is isolated, you used to have an outgoing kid. They used to be fun and happy and they were, you know, outgoing. And now they won't come out of their room. They got a nasty attitude. They dressed in black with black fingernail polish, wearing sunshades. I don't want to be around anybody. Mm-hmm. Terrible grades. Those types of things. Mm-hmm. Start asking questions. Mm-hmm. Pull out the drug test. Yeah, start asking <laughs> questions. For real. Start asking questions. Because our adolescents are going through it right now. School is not the way yeah. it used to be. I I and we're built different. When yes. I say, and I'm not going to get on my soapbox about this generation, but, you know, we grew up in the eight. <laughs> when we say, yeah. listen, everybody was bullied. Yeah. I got bullied. You got yes. Everybody was bullied. Somebody, man, you fat. You ugly. Yeah. You this. You're yeah. that. You better have a, a strong comeback. Right. <laughs> Your mom. You had that. Yeah. That's the that's yeah. the one hundred percent go to right there. Yeah. Your mama, you better be ready to fight after that's that. That's it. Up. That's yeah. it. You know, but but she looking at me. Yeah. They talking about me. Everything. What's You're, the one you say, baby? Bullying. Everything. Uh, that's inappropriate. Oh yeah, that's offensive. That's offensive. Yeah, everything's offensive. Everything's offensive. We're so. not building our kid. When we say, when we say you're not built like that, mm-hmm. or I'm built for it, that insinuates that you probably weren't born with it. Yes, and we got to put it in you. Yes, that yes, part. yeah. And so our job as parents is putting this stuff in our kids, mm-hmm. um, so that they can take somebody saying, "Oh, you ugly," and you don't fall apart and say, "I'm gonna go kill myself." Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. I you stole know? on my kids. Self worth. Yeah. Self worth out. <laughs> That ain't what it means. On a regular. Yeah. Well, it's just if you build up their self worth, it won't be anything that somebody else can say that's gonna have them running home crying. Yeah. So I understand. You got anything uh, you want to share with the people out there? Be looking for for you? Oh, nothing. Well, no. I mean, well, I do. I do yeah. a little. Bit. Go tell them. I, I do you. a little bit. I mean, I do some consulting. So I do some some psychiatric consulting. Um, I have a. a a skin a skin line that I just a skincare product that I yes. just came up with this. Talk about that. Yes. Tell them about your skincare. It's called Robbie Natural. So um we talk about chemicals all the time mm-hmm. and the stuff that we're putting in stuff. We really don't even know how this stuff is affecting us. So I'm a strong proponent of using as natural as stuff you can. Yes. And so um I have a, a hygiene spray and then uh, a skincare cream um that we have. And I love the cream. Um, so tell them how they can find your uh, skincare line. They want so we have that. a Shopify site, Ravi Lura Naturals. Spell that for R A V I L U R R A N A T U R A L S. Ravi Lura Naturals. Man, um, well we sure appreciate you coming, Fantasia. Oh, you yes. are Most a definitely. super tight. Can yes. I get two more for Absolutely, women? Absolutely, girl. For, for depression, because yeah. that's gonna bother me if I don't say this for women. Say Go ahead. girl. Okay. Um, because I know we say a lot of times I ain't got time to be depressed. That I got part. I got too much to do to be depressed. That part. But some other forms of depression I want women to kind of be aware of is um postpartum depression. Man. That's something unique to women. Yes. So I want no any women, any woman, if you had a baby recently or even what we call it's really peripartum so it can actually be onset in in yes, pregnancy and let's also uh let people know that the postpartum period okay can last what up to two years after it, it can and even a year after mm-hmm. you can because you here's the thing a lot of the times um women feel uh the weight of motherhood mm-hmm and this little human is depending on you for everything. That's a lot. Yes. But sometimes you're scared to say, I don't know how to do this. Right. And you have um, parents now that may not have learned how to do it and they can't teach the next generation how to do it. You know? Um, so I wanted to draw attention to that. Don't ever be afraid. If you just had a baby or you even when you get pregnant and you start feeling depressed, talk to your OBGYN. Go find a mental health professional, Mm -hmm. okay, so you can talk to them about it. The other one is PMDD, premenstrual dysphoric disorder. Yes. 
Um, and so that's something only particular to women as well. Okay. Um, uh, at some point, people thought, oh, it's not a real thing. It's absolutely yes, real. Yes, it is. It's like PMS on steroids. Mm. Okay. You know, if your your husband go hide and your kids go hide from you when it's getting ready to be your, your time. Oh, what she got? She might have, you know. She oh. might. So. Uh, That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for telling me. Yeah. So, uh, I also want to say uh, this too. Um, MDD, Major dep- Depression Disorder with Psychosis. Okay. The reason why I want to hyper focus in on that is sometimes you can come so depressed that you start seeing and hearing things, mm-hmm. and you know. And so people say, "Oh, maybe he's schizophrenic. Maybe he's got some." If you start to see or hear things, go to a mental health professional. Yes. Okay. Off top. Yes, and don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. Don't feel all. like um, people are gonna judge you because this is your health. You know what I mean? And a lot of the stuff, um, a lot of mental health conditions are treatable um with therapy and medications like you said and you know what i mean it's a it's a brighter side so you don't have to be suffering alone let me say this about medications and stuff too okay because i have a lot of patients will say i want to go and i want to try um um what was the ashwagandha or something Mm -hmm. i'm gonna go get some ashwagandha for my anxiety okay that's fine i meet people where they're at you can try the ashwagandha but if you're so scared that you can't go outside, you can't <laughs> go to the grocery store because you have a panic attack going to the grocery store. You panicking because you can't go over a bridge. You can't drive over a bridge. Ashwagandha probably ain't going to get it done. It ain't going to get it done. Okay. So sometimes I just want to say this. like It's okay to try things naturally, but still check in with a, a healthcare provider because we all can't always take something natural too because, again, those have side effects. They can in, you yes. know interfere with medications you're taking. Yep. They, you know, so even if you say I'm gonna go it alone and do something over the counter, just please al- allow yourself to get the best care possible. At least go get the opinion yes, of yes. somebody else. Amen. I know y'all gonna come for us in the comment, but that's cool. You know, you got some you got some negative people out there that oh, don't like us. Yeah, I don't. We we could care less. We trying to like I say move the needle. You're not our target audience. Yes. All right. Amen. We ain't talking to you. Yeah. We ain't talking to you. Unsubscribe. Matter yeah. of fact, we might be talking to you. Maybe yeah. You, yeah. yeah, you might be the one. You might need to go on and see somebody. <laughs> you might be Your the attitude one. terrible. You might be the one. <laughs> Absolutely. You got some shout outs? Shout out to my husband. All right. Hey, hey, I Vincent. love him. All right. My you, two kiddos. You better, you better shout out to him. You see how she lit up when she said that? Yeah. Right. The man. I, look, if, I hope y'all have some stuff about black marriages and stuff, child. We are. Oh, yeah, we're going to have to have both of y'all on for Okay. That. Come on. Because yeah, black yeah. love is real, for black sure. Black love is real. Well, I appreciate you coming out again. This is a a, a real serious subject that, that, that we want to continue to touch on mm-hmm. uh, periodically. You know, I don't want, like I say, we don't want to get too preachy. We want to make it fun. You know what I mean? And educational for y'all. You know, we the word ignorant is, is the ugly sounding word, but it just means that you don't know. And we just want to not make you not let you stay ignorant, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. You know, you want to, like I said, keep moving that needle in a positive direction. And once again, I want to thank you, Miss Fantasia. Thank you. You are a super tight family member. Thank you, Bobo and Jazzy K. You no, know I'ma get some game tuned in with super tight. Yeah. I get the low love from Big Bobo from the front seat, not no photos. 